bring this uh, session on uh, various forms of contentment, happiness, uh, to a close with Sandra Shamas. Uh, Sandra's two books and five one-woman shows are based on her own life. Uh, the usual stuff, growing up, uh, marriage, uh, divorce, uh, moving up to the country, approaching middle age, but really, <laughs> really, it applies to all of us, men and women. She's funny, and as you can see, she's dangerous, Sandra Shamas. What? What I have learned so far today, that if you show up late, they'll park you anywhere, and it feels great. Mars needs women, <laughs> and they have one working on it right now, and that I have no graphs. Why don't I have a pie graph? Such an awesome thing. We were discussing this earlier. Graphs really do make it. Oh, God, Jesus. Um, I don't, um, uh, this is very interesting, this little thing here, there's a lot of these around, do you think they'll miss if I take? Um, I didn't know if I should come here because I've sort of been involved in these kinds of things in the past, not like this Moses, no, um, and I didn't really have a good time. I'm just being honest. So I thought what I would do is I would talk about uh, things that inspire me, because that's where I get my best ideas. <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, looking in the mirror, you know, speaking of middle age, I was looking in the mirror and I saw something moving one day. <laughs> it was never there before. I love the wrinkling, the wrinkling is good, you know. I'm good with the wrinkling, I'm good with the hair going white, I'm good, I'm good. The wobble. Mm. I called a plastic surgeon. I found the most expensive plastic surgeon in Canada, who's at the corner of Avenue Road in Davenport. Yeah, yeah you know him. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you look good. <laughs> and uh, so I, I made an appointment, and um, it's like four months to see this guy. I said, do you understand what's going on here? <laughs> I, went, I got to see him. Like this place, of Av and Dav, it's like you go in, and, and it's very like, Ka-ching, you know, ka-ching, ka-ching. There's a guy with a basket, like, of money, and he's just fucking stapling it to the wall, pretty much, you know? <laughs> like, this, the, the uh, elevator is padded, <laughs> in case you're hysterical. The waiting room is very dimly lit, and I, went, I, I walked in, you know, like, like this, and there were women sitting like this. I thought, oh man, what have we done to ourselves? Anyway, I hung out with the receptionist. Because <laughs> they rock. Receptionists totally rock. And I went in to see this man. And a lovely man, as you know. <laughs> and he's now looking at me like, <laughs> like this. Patent leather shoe looking under my chin. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that would be funny. Said, um, well, I don't really see a whole lot there. Eh, eh, it's there. Don't look. Don't lie to me. This is not the time. We've bonded now. Don't lie. He said, okay, well, here's how it goes. That, that, this, <laughs> that is particularly a manifestation of the skin leaving the muscle wall. <laughs> he said that particular area stretches all the way like this and then goes down to here. Eventually, all of this will leave the muscle wall. I'm thinking pelican. Like, you know, like two praying hands under your... Just take a bobby pin and... Then he came, comes over and he starts doing this. 
I said, hey, 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 that was fine before you touched it. He said, no, well, we'll just do this. I said, we're not doing that. And don't, don't. Anyway, it was very interesting. It was a very interesting experience. And, you know, at, the, at a certain point, you can't care. But I think here's the other thing. You know, I had one that's terrible mirror. This reminds me of that, you know, magnifying mirror in my home. The eight times magnifying mirror. <laughs> where every pore is this big, you know, has a civilization living in it. You're going, why are you people in there? And get the hell out of there. Um, like, I, I think the greatest thing about actually being in my middle age is that my eyesight is failing. <laughs> Which kind of goes along with my... I don't know how to describe it. Um, when I, turned, I went into my 40s, I went into the I, I don't give a shit category of caring. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. I don't. I don't. Seriously, I don't know if anybody else experienced that, but I was so caring before. And then I hit 40 and went, <sighs> and I realized that as I proceed into my 40s, I care less, like less and less, which totally explains ancient, ancient, ancient women who are just like. <laughs> and you know they don't care. They haven't cared for a really long time. And they will absolutely, like, they will not tolerate caring around them. <laughs> Get the hell away from me, kind of, you know. I like, uh, I like, I, I love, I love being older. I, I love, totally love being older. I love it because I'm a big girl and I can do whatever I want. Uh, I was uh, meditating on the issue of space earlier, space, my space. And uh, somebody always, people ask me, do you travel? And I say, inner landscape because I mine my life for my work. So it obviously it behooves me to have an interesting life, because why would you even pay a dollar to see, you know? Well, then I went to the store. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I was thinking about space. I like space. I like area. I live on a farm. I like area. I cannot see another man-made building from my home, which thrills and delights me. But unfortunately, it also has created a long-standing nightmare in my life where I have this terrible reoccurring dream that I wake up and they've paved everything. Yes. They've paved my entire world. There are streetcar tracks. There are like houses with kids in them. I wake up and go, what the hell has gone on? Why wasn't that? And I'm all in a dither like this. But meanwhile, people are like smoking and relaxing. And I'm the only one fucked up about it, you know? Oh, you people get out of my yard. No, what? Hi. Anyway. <laughs> they didn't tell me what to say. <laughs> I got to park in front. Did I mention that? <laughs> um, yeah, I like space. Ultimately, I have my, my job on this planet. I was interviewed earlier. What's your job, Sandra? My job here and on this planet, not necessarily here today, but generally, is to be who I am. This is my job just to be who I am and not what anyone expects of me, which is also beautiful with the not caring part. My dear, let me tell you. So ultimately, if I am not true to myself, then I cannot be true and stand here and deliver something that is of truth so that you could relate to it as an audience. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of things, not necessarily things that are really good, but some things that are really bad. Well, bad and good, hard, not good judgment. Better or worse, I guess, is a better way to put it. Um, you know, I used to watch Bonanza when I was a kid. Do you, anybody here know of Bonanza? Yes? Yeah. You know, I don't know, the Pygmalion theme, you know the one, you know the Pygmalion theme where the guy goes to the gutter where the woman always is and takes her out of the gutter and, and turns her into a woman. You know this one? Yes? 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 Well, they did it on Bonanza once. Uh, no kidding. And uh, turns out Haas and little Joe were in town. Well, they were. And... Uh, buying or selling beef or wheat or both. And there's this big kerfuffle out in, the, uh, out in the yard, you know. They go out and there's two people fighting. It looks like a father and a son, right? And so, God, the Cartwrights, you know, they just can't leave well enough alone, right? They're in there like a fucking dirty shirt. Anyway, 
Haas has got the guy, little Joe's got the young lad, right? And they're wrestling around, screaming at each other. And it turns out as, she's t as she is pitching and tossing, her hat falls off to re reveal this wealth of chestnut hair, right? So it's a girl. The guy's been beating his daughter in the street. Thanks. So they decide this is not proper, and the Cartwrights decide to take her back to the Ponderosa. <laughs> Don't lie to me. You saw this. <laughs> They take her back, she doesn't like it, she's screaming, she's a wild one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, and I guess little Joe wants to keep her like a stray pop, you know? <laughs> they go and get good Mrs. Miller from down the road, which has got to be Mexico, because the Ponderosa is so huge, right? <laughs> and they bring, their, and they bring, her, bring her there to, to you know, scrub up this hellion. And that next scene with that freestanding galvanized bathtub, you know, and that big frothy action, and she's screaming and pitching. Oh, Mrs. Miller's got her by her. She's scraping shit off her like that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the, and then meanwhile, all the Cartwrights pacing back and forth in front of the fireplace like that, which is, I guess, what men do when women bathe. I do not know. <laughs> Finally, Mrs. Miller comes to the top of the stairs, and this is how they show you she's had a hard time. She tucks one errant lock back into her. Well, Ben, I've done all I can. It's up to you boys now. And out she comes. That hellion is quaffed and cleaned and wearing a calico dress. I think it's Adams. <laughs> he went to San Francisco eventually, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, little Joe, right? <laughs> Right away, she comes down, the ship takes her arm like that, you know, leads her over to the table where Hop Singh has made another one of his country's favorite dishes, <laughs> chicken pot pie. <laughs> Cantonese style chicken pot pie. And she sits down and she was raised by chickens. Like she is feral beyond all comprehension. Like her arms are swinging a million miles. On the, all the cartwrights are just terrified of her. Like little Joe, in his, he's a magician and I loved him. He just takes her little hand, puts it on a fork, and puts it on a knife, and right away she has European manners. <laughs> if you only knew it was that easy to make a woman. Fantastic. <laughs> then, of course, they fall in love, right? Natch. The next big scene is them uh, laying on a big grassy knoll, and they took out the little, the little, with the, <laughs> the little buggy. See, that was the other thing about being middle-aged. You lose all your nouns. <laughs> No, no. That little mm -hmm with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know this? It's so sad. So fucking sad. You can't even know. Went to the went to the cupboard. Not a noun there. Not a noun. No nouns. And whoever took my nouns replaced each one of them with eleven adjectives. And some festive hand movements. Later, I will hula, and someone will interpret for me. Where was I? That's another happy side effect in middle age. Huh, what are you people doing in my bedroom? Okay, yeah, 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 little Joe, little Joe, little Joe. Cell phone. I love that. Yeah, yeah, keep going. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be for me. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the next scene is uh, that calico number spread out on a grassy knoll. Huh? Little Joe, he's got his hat off, he's got his head on her lap, and he's languished out that way, right? And, she's, and he's chewing on straw. Which is how you can tell a Cartwright's in love, for sure, eh? 
Then the next scene is that her pa's been sprung from jail and he's back at the Ponderosa demanding his daughter. And then, of course, they come back and she sees her pa's horse and she's all scared. You know, she tucks in behind little Joe. This is the same woman who is wrestling the man in the mud, Frank. You know, you get it? And now she's all scared and she's all tucked in behind little Joe and she's just frightened and she's trembling. <laughs> and uh, her pa draws a gun on little Joe. And there's a big to do. <laughs> and there's shouting and shouting and shouting and much gun waving. And then what does she do? Steps in front, takes a bullet for little Joe. Just like a good woman, huh? <laughs> oh, and they do love women on the Ponderosa. You can tell by how many they had on the show. <laughs> They're like the goldfish of humanity there, you know. <laughs> and it's not a wonder because, as you know, or maybe you do not know, but the, the, the reason for Bonanza, the whole point of Bonanza, was that Ben Cartwright had three sons by three different women. Do you, do you know this? That is the Bible of Bonanza, honest to God, that Ben Cartwright impregnated three women and they all died in childbirth, which explains why these guys look so weird standing next to one another. So try to think of something more terrifying than Ben coming to court. You know the noun thing? It can be festive for a while. I was, you know, when you're released of your nouns, it's kind of like a happy oblivion in a way. <laughs> Seriously, it's just like, you know who I am. <laughs> sure. But, you know, after a while, you want to get more, you know, more specific. So you have to say, you know that thing, the thing that goes around, the thing that you put on top of that thing when you need to do the thing there. <laughs> if you're talking to another 45-year-old, it makes perfect sense. 30-year-olds <laughs> get impatient. They make a purse mouth. <laughs> I'm very relaxed with it. Or that, yeah, and when I was growing up in Sudbury, you know, um, Ontario, which is where all, this is what you look like when you come from Sudbury, uh, which is the question, where do you come from, Sudbury? <laughs> where do your parents come from? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> Two planets, we think. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, Working in uh, Sudbury, I was working with women who were in their 40s, you know, and they just, they were very proactive on their own behalf. They'd just say, hey, you, pass that, uh, that, uh, that son of a bitch right there, give it to me. <laughs> and you would move. You would move and pass a lot of stuff to her, even if she didn't want it, you know. Just <laughs> Anything here? Yeah, are you good? I have two minutes. It's yellow and it's beaming. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like that. I remember standing next to a microwave once. Actually, I watched a man stand next to a microwave once, much in the way I'm sort of feeling like this. And he said, God, I can feel my nuts shrinking. <laughs> I think that's a perfect way to end. Thank you very much.